Yo, what's happening guys? So it's Nick here. So we're gonna be doing a bit of a coding challenge. Ideally to be able to build a deadlift spot using a little bit of machine learning in Python to be able to count our reps and ideally correct our form. Let's get it. So in order to do this, I'm first up going to use Python and OpenCV to access a video camera. Then I'm planning on building some custom AI models using a helper library called scikit-learn. But I'm going to need to extract my body's coordinates. I'm going to try to do this using a deep learning model called PoseNet that's available via TensorFlow. Once that's done, hopefully I'll try to build a user interface and run it on a Raspberry Pi. But how do we actually make a deadlift bot? So using the PoseNet AI model, I'm going to extract my body's coordinates using pose estimation. This will give me relative positions for different joints, for example, my hips, shoulders, and my ankles. I'm then going to use this data to build specific AI models to determine when I'm in different positions of a deadlift, like up or down, but also to track form, like when I'm leaning the wrong way. Let's write some code. All right, so at this point, I think I've sort of sorted out the majority of the key point detection. So in order to do that, I've used a library called MediaPipe. So this is a library that I've used for a bunch of key point detection stuff before. Now, the one thing is that I haven't actually tested this out on a Raspberry Pi. The documentation says that it should work, but uh, we all know how that sort of goes. So let's take a quick look at the code that I've gone and written. I'm not gonna bore you with this. We're gonna do it in a sort of interactive way. So first things first, I brought in a bunch of dependencies. So namely, these were OpenCV, MediaPipe, and NumPy. Then set up a connection to the webcam using OpenCV. This allows the bot to connect to different video devices, like in this case, a webcam. I then ran a loop to process each frame of video from the webcam, which in turn gives the Python program access to the video feed for later processing. Right, so that's the video feed sorted. I then needed to bring in the first AI model, PoseNet. To set this up, I needed to tell the model how accurately we wanted to detect and track. Now there's a bit of a trade-off here, because we need to ensure that we constantly detect the person in frame versus being hyper accurate. I set this at a bit of a level threshold, in this case, 50% for each. At this point, I could track my body using nothing but PoseNet. The red dots show each landmark and the white lines show each limb that the bot will effectively be able to see. The next bit was purely optional, but your boy couldn't help himself. I changed the line and the landmark color using MediaPipe's formatting options. You can see the lines, aka the bones, are now purple and the landmarks are now blue. That's pretty much the easy bit done. Now I needed to head to the gym to grab some data to build the model that actually tracks the deadlifts. Right, so off to the gym. Damn guys, I'm hoping we've got enough data. I am dying. All right, I'm gonna go finish this workout and then we're gonna go back to the desk, train up our machine learning model. Let's get it. All right, so I've managed to get some data. So I went to the gym, I did some deadlifts and the rest of my workout. But most importantly, I've got data now, which should allow me to fine tune and build this secondary deadlift model that really determines when we're at the top versus when I'm at the bottom of a lift. Now, the footage that I've got sort of looks like this, right? So you can see it's pretty big, but that's fine. It should be in respect to the coordinate. So ideally, what I'm gonna try to do is generate some coordinate data that determines when I'm at the top versus at the bottom. As soon as I appear on the screen, you'll be able to see me popping up. So you can see that those detections are actually happening. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hit you on my keyboard and that's gonna start generating coordinate data. You can see that generating. So that's down, up, 
down, up, down, up. Okay, so that's pretty much the deadlift part of my workout done. So if I hit Q, that should close down. So now I've actually got some coordinate data that we can actually go and use to fine tune this model. So I'm gonna try doing that and then we'll be able to test it out. So using all that coordinate data, I was able to build a second machine learning model using a Python library called scikit-learn. This specific model would allow me to detect when I'm at the bottom versus when I'm at the top of my deadlift. I was able to bring this into my existing detection code using a library called pickle. And then I was able to integrate that into our existing media pipe loop so that we could actually detect the bottom versus the top of the deadlift in real time. Right, so I've got it working, but right now it doesn't actually look like it's performing all that well. So check this out. So if I go, go and test going up and down, that's up. So it's making detections, but the performance isn't all that good. So what I'm going to try to do is add in a bunch of additional data and clean up some of the data that I already collected. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this starts to perform a little bit better. Oh my God, guys, check this out. I think it's performing better. So I ended up cleaning up the data. So I was just clearer with my annotation. So now check this out. doing deadlifts how sick is that so i think there's one last thing that i want to do and just add a counter so it's incrementing as we're actually doing it so i think i'm going to work on that and then get cracking on actually deploying it to the raspberry pi So I managed to get the code onto the Raspberry Pi, so I've packaged it all up into a nice Python script and we've called it swoleboy.py. The only thing is that as expected, MediaPipe doesn't exactly run. So it's not just a pip install MediaPipe for the Python coders, but basically for the non-coders, basically means that we can't just take that code from our deep learning computer and throw it onto the Raspberry Pi and have that work. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit more digging into that to try to get that up and uh, running. But for now, I'm gonna go and grab a beer. In spite of that, what I've also started doing is learning a little bit of Blender. So yeah, I'm building up the Blender donut and going through Blender Guru's tutorials to build up slightly nicer case than what we get over the standard Raspberry Pi. And I also jumped onto Amazon and I bought this touchscreen LCD, which looks pretty cool. So hopefully we can render our Swole Boy gym tracker onto this as we're actually in the gym so you can see it in real time. So I thought it was going to be a couple of beers, ended up being a couple of cocktails and uh, yeah. So I came back and decided it's time to get into some uh, 3D modeling to start building a box for our Raspberry Pi. Now I spent probably around about two hours and as you can see we're making great progress. We've got uh, two cubes that don't really fit together. So last night I ended up staying up till around about 2 a.m. and I managed to get MediaPipe or the key point model running on the Raspberry Pi. But I missed one huge thing. The deadlift model itself was trained on the gaming PC which has a 64-bit chip. This runs with a 32-bit chip. So when I tried to bring it over to here to get it to work, it just threw a ton of errors. 
So this actually didn't end up turning out to be that large of a problem. I realized I could take the existing code that I'd used to train the deadlift model on the deep learning computer that I've got, and I could take that code and actually just retrain it on the Raspberry Pi itself and it actually kind of ran pretty quick. So after retraining the machine learning model on the Raspberry Pi itself, which surprisingly was kind of quick, we got it working. That being said, the model itself was performing like crap. Like it was not detecting up versus down all that accurately. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna throw a bunch more data at that machine learning model. Ideally, it should perform a little bit better. And then all that's left to do is 3D print a nice case, which encapsulate this, the LCD screen and the camera. So we're gonna to need to do a little bit of repositioning uh, after my little rant on 3D printing. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm using OpenCV and Python to record more deadlift video inside the apartment. So hopefully we can use that for labeling. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I didn't really just want to leave the Raspberry Pi and the LCD screen and the camera just floating around. So I decided that I was going to 3D print a case to sort of encapsulate all of this. Lo and behold, I ended up binge watching a ton of videos from the YouTube channel Make a Tale. Shout out to Jonathan, you got an awesome series there, to be able to build the Swole Boy 3000. Right, so in spite of the fact that I spent a bunch of time actually trying to 3D print a case for our little Swole Boy device here, I seem to have made one kind of critical mistake. There's a huge gap between the two different sides of the case. So with the rep counter machine learning model working pretty much okay, I figured I'd throw it up on Twitter and see what everyone had to say. This led me to the next couple of machine learning models, which were all around form analysis. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So off to the gym for the final test of the model, guys. Got our little raspberry pie inside my bag. Let's go test it out and see how this actually performs.
So this kind of went all right. So we ended up building the deadlift bot and integrating it into the Raspberry Pi. There were probably a couple of things that I think could have been a little bit better, namely the device that we actually deployed on. So I don't know if a Raspberry Pi is necessarily cut out to run four different machine learning slash AI models at the same time. That's sort of why you saw that glitching. To be honest, I've got a list of enhancements that are probably about a mile long that we could definitely use to improve this. Uh, but let me know what you thought and I'll leave the code in the description below so you can try it out yourself. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like, share and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Peace.